All right, so let's look at a kite. You already have some ideas about a kite, but let's look at this. Um, again, here are the segments. Notice two are the same and two are the same, but which two? Um, if I hide that one, hey, look, that was A. That one was B. Okay. So the top two are A and B. So if I move this, notice, watch the left. Watch here where all the numbers are for the sides. Notice top two, stop, top two are congruent and the bottom two are congruent. So that would be two pairs of congruent adjacent sides. Two pairs of congruent adjacent sides. Now, now they could be the side two. I mean, we can turn this thing any way we want, right? It doesn't have to be up and down. Okay. Now look at the angles. There is a pair that is the same. But only one pair. No matter what I do with them, look at the angle numbers. There's always one set of angles that are the same. Now, they don't necessarily add up to 180 or, or anything, but they're always the same. I say 180 because some people think, well, it's half of a half of a kite and the whole kite to add up to 360. Um, so one pair of angles are the same. And they are across from each other. The other two, again, nothing special. Let's look at those diagonal things. Diagonal. Are the diagonals the same? That would be G and H. Let's hide those suckers. Well, do G and H look the same? 365271. You know, no, they're not the same, but they do look. Like they're always going to be perpendicular. So let's look at that. Let's see if they are perpendicular. So we're going to find where they cross. And we're going to measure that angle. And I missed. Try it again. Measure the angle. Boom, boom, boom. And it's a right angle. So the diagonals are perpendicular. Look, no matter what I do with it, okay, diagonals are perpendicular. That's another. Here's something even better. Watch this. This segment from D to E. Let's say that's that's segment I, and then this segment from B to E. Segment one point two three. Oh, not only is it a bi, is it perpendicular? but it's also a bisector. So one of the segments is a perpendicular bisector of the other. All right. Um, let's look at angles again. Let's hide. Uh, yeah, we don't need those two. Look at you know, the, the, the half of the angle, like this side of A and this side of A, or this side of B and this side of B. Well, A looks like it's getting cut in half. B, yeah, no way. That's not getting cut in half. Well, because I make it bigger, smaller. You can really see it's not cut in half. Um, and C looks like it's getting cut in half. So let's see if it is. So we're going to measure from D to A to E. And that is uh, 64.75. And B to A to E. Uh, I measured the wrong one. E to A to B. And there were numbers right on top of each other, so that's tough. So we look over here. 64.75. So that, an angle is getting bisected. What do you think about the bottom? Looks like it, but let's verify. B, C, 2194. E, C, D, 2194. So this diagonal, not only is it a perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal, that's a property, but it's also an angle bisector of two angles. Okay. The whole point behind those properties, if we can make the properties happen, then we can construct the shape. So angles are tough to make happen, make two angles the same. 
not that hard, but to then make other parts the same. But this concept of perpendicular, easy to make. This concept of equal sides, easy to make happen. So those are important ones. So did you write all those down, what the properties were?